It's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, continuing our 5-minute review playlist. In a previous video, we had an introduction about nephrotic syndrome. In the last video, we talked about minimal change disease. Now, it's time for focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. For a quick review on miscellaneous medical topics, check out this playlist. There are many reasons for hypoproteinemia. One of them is nephrotic syndrome. You're losing proteins. That's why you get dependent pitting edema that's a transudate. A normal kidney is like a good colander, no protein left behind. But a kidney with nephrotic syndrome is like a screwed up colander. You end up with proteins in the urine. When you lose proteins in the urine, you will have less proteins left in the blood, which leads to edema due to decreased oncotic pressure. Nephrotic syndrome, high protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema and hyperlipidemia. In nephrotic syndrome, you lose tons of proteins, but in nephritic syndrome, itis means inflammation, by the way, you lose blood because they are so inflamed, you start to get hematuria. Many nephritic syndrome patients also have hypertension. A good kidney should maintain and regulate your blood pressure, not a bad one. The histopathological subtypes of nephrotic syndrome include minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, membranous nephropathy, diabetic nephropathy, amyloidosis. Some mnemonics, this is the young, this is the addict, this is the thick, this is the sweet, this is the green apple. So today we're talking focal segmental, what kind of addict? Heroin. Before you join any club, you need to learn the lingo. What does focal mean? Focal means involving only a few glomeruli, not all of the glomeruli. But diffuse is the opposite of focal. Diffuse means global. All of my glomeruli are affected. Today we're talking about focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Some glomeruli are affected, but others are not. So that is focal. How about segmental? Only a segment, only a part of the nephron or glomerulus is affected. So even when I affect this specific glomerulus, I'm not gonna destroy the entirety of it. I'm gonna destroy some parts of it. I'm gonna destroy parts of the nephron, not all of it. A nephron, of course, is the tubule, including proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal collecting, etc. Pause and review. Your blood is made of plasma and cells. The plasma is water and proteins. The proteins are albumin and globulin. Where does your saliva come from? Where does your urine come from? Where does your earwax come from? Where does your sweat come from? Where do your precious crocodile tears come from? Where does your aqueous humor come from? All of them come from the blood. To be more accurate, it's from the plasma. All of this is the result of plasma filtration. If we're talking about saliva, you get the plasma. This is your salivary gland. Your salivary gland is gonna filtrate the plasma, modify the plasma, and spit out saliva. If we're talking about the urine, same concept applied. We're gonna take the plasma only. How about the album? Nope, I'm not gonna filter you. How about the globin? Nope, I'm not gonna filter you. How about those doozy red blood cells? Nope, I'm not gonna filter you because I'm a good, normal kidney. And then when I filter the plasma with the electrolytes that are in the plasma, I will reabsorb the good stuff back to the blood and I will get rid of the waste products into the urine. That's a good kidney. In kidney disease, you might start losing some of these proteinuria or some of these hematuria. Nephrotic syndrome, nephritic syndrome. That's nephrology for you. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Here is the blood vessel, blood is coming here. All right, you're gonna filter only the plasma. We're gonna go this way. If it's some good stuff, reabsorb it back. Bad stuff, continue on until you end up in the urine. In order for plasma to go from the blood vessel to the nephron, you have to pass by three layers. The fenestrated endothelium, the glomerular base membrane, and the podocytes. Plasma is filtered, proteins are not filtered normally. Why not? because they are bigger than the fenestrations of the endothelium and because the proteins are negatively charged and so is the membrane because the membrane is phospholipid and phosphate has negative charges. What did we see in minimal change disease? Effacement of the podocyte foot processes. What the flip are the foot processes? These are your podocytes foot processes. That's normal. But in minimal change disease or focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, they are flattened. They are not like this. They are not zigzag. No, no zigzag action. Flat. 
minimal change disease was discussed in the previous video. Pause and review. Remember, the patient is young, the disease is mild, the prognosis is excellent because I do respond to steroids. But in focal freaking segmental glomerulosclerosis, the patient is older, the disease is more severe, the prognosis is worse. Why worse? Because of poor response to steroids and because about 50% of patients will end up with end-stage renal disease in about 10-year period on average. Blood pressure is high, there is some microscopic hematuria. Oops, this is getting into nephritic land. So you can have both symptoms of nephrotic syndrome and nephritic syndrome in the same patient. By light microscopy, it's called focal segmental sclerosis and hyalinosis with lipid-laden macrophages, what we call foamy. It's idiopathic, which means we are idiots and we cannot figure out the pathology. We have podocyte injury and you end up losing proteins in the urine. Are you talking albumin or globulin? Both. It's a non-selective protein urea. Causes. Primary idiopathic. Idiots cannot figure out the pathology. It could be autosomal dominant if it's inherited. Or it could be secondary to another disease, such as HIV, heroin abuse, IgA nephropathy, so you have nephritic and nephrotic in the same patient, and parvo B19, which causes pure red cell aplasia if you have a hemolytic anemia, such as sickle cell disease or beta thalassemia. Treatment, the only thing that we can give is steroids or immunosuppressants. Only 15% of patients respond. The others do not, and they will end up with end-stage renal disease. It's a horrible disease. Some doctors consider focal segmental glomerulosclerosis as a complication of minimal change disease. So they argue that you go from minimal change disease to focal segmental to end-stage renal disease. Other doctors argue that focal segmental is a separate pathology than minimal change disease and one has nothing to do with the other. And then both sides will start cussing at each other and it gets ugly. Here is a great table to compare between minimal change and focal segmental. Pause and review. These are the five stages of chronic kidney disease. As you know, end-stage renal disease is here. It's when your glomerular filtration rate drops below 15 mLs per minute. Nephrotic syndrome, the histopathology. Pause and review. Heroin abuse can lead to focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. If you want to learn more about opiates, check out my CNS pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectionaries.com. If you want some kidney pharmacology, check out my cardiac pharmacology course on my website. And currently we have a discount. Use promo code KIDNEY to get a 40% off for a limited time only. Thank you for watching. Smash like, subscribe, hit the bell, click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Go to Picmonic for animated medical mnemonics. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, the Rolls Royce of medical education.